All right, we stopped at verse 18. Uh, sorry, verse 17 last Sunday in James chapter 1. So we're going to pick up from James chapter 1, verse 18 onwards. So uh, please follow along with us. So what he tells us here in verse 18 is he says, We've been born again by the word of truth. The word of truth, that is the word of God. The Old Testament and the message the apostles have communicated to them. By that word, he says, look, we believers, we've been born again as first fruits of this new creation. I mean, these are the, we are the early believers. So remember, this is approximately the first, you know, around 10 to 12 years after the church has been born. And so then in verse 19 and 20, what he's impressing on them is, Brethren, if we've been born of the word of truth, there has to be a change in how we live. Amen? There's got to be a change. And what does he point to right away? Verses 19 and 20, he says, My beloved brethren, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry, because when you're angry, you don't do what's right. In the eyes of God, we must continue to receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save our souls. But in order to continue receiving this, this is James 1, verse 21. In order to continue receiving the implanted word, he says the first thing we must do is we must lay aside all filthiness and wickedness. Verse 22. But we must also be doers of the word. So you see how he's developing this. Verse 18, we are born again by the word. Verse 21, you receive the word. That it, it transforms your soul. Verse 22, you and I must be doers of the word. When you look into the word, it's like looking into a mirror. God reveals things concerning you. There are things that need to be addressed or corrected and other things that need to be recognized about yourself and you affirm about yourself. Both happens when you look into the mirror of the Word of God. Another interesting thing that we see in this passage is in verse 25 where James mentions, he refers to the Word of God as the perfect law of liberty. The last couple of verses here in James 1, he says, verses 26 and 27. He says, you know, if you're really spiritual, if you're really spiritual, true religion, a true expression of spirituality is this. Ability to tame your tongue, to visit people in need. In this case, he specifically mentions orphans and widows and to live unspotted from the world. Three things. Chapter 2. Let's get into chapter 2. Let's read verses 1 through 9. Wonderful passage. Nine verses. So relevant to us today. You know, we, this church, we call it All People's Church. Which means everybody is welcome. Amen? But we need to show it in practice. And this passage is so relevant. He says, you know, if a rich person, if a person who's very wealthy comes in and a person who's not so wealthy comes in, you know, you treat them, you must treat them equally. James mentions four reasons why even, you know, who, who are people who may not be, you know, rich, economic, economically well off. He mentions four things here. And I'm just summarizing that. He says... Look, the poor, this is verse 5, the poor have been chosen by God just as anybody else. The poor can be rich in faith just as anybody else. The poor are heirs of the kingdom just as anybody else. And the poor love the Lord just as much as anybody else. Verse 4 again, he says, uh, you know, 
uh, if you show partiality, you become judges with the evil thoughts. Now, th this does not mean we shouldn't judge people. Of course, Jesus taught us, you know, in John uh, 7 and verse 24, he said, judge righteous judgment. So you need to be discerning. You need to, you know, look into things carefully, but don't become a judge with evil reasoning. That is wrong. You judge impartially. Judge without preference. Judge without prejudice. From verse 6, you can find out that when we treat people with prejudice, we dishonor the person. Verse 6, he says, you've dishonored the poor man. So you dishonor people when you treat them uh, out of prejudice or uh, impartiality. And, you, and you know, you're, you're being unfair. So what James is saying is, we are fulfilling the royal law. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. When we treat people without prejudice, without partiality. But if we don't, then we are a transgressor. We have broken the law.